Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. We wanted to do uh, one more video here, hopefully it's the last one like this, of a project that we started before we ever thought of doing YouTube. But this is something we got started last fall, and it's something we've seen the need for for quite a while now. So we wanted a place where we, we call it a root cellar, but it's not really a root cellar. What it is more for us is freeze-proof storage, because when you got a cabin that's only 350 square feet on the inside, you like the homestead, you like to store up things, you really need some place you can store that canned goods that you work so hard to uh, grow and can and process and get all saved and ready to use throughout the coming months, you don't want it to freeze. And you really run out of room quickly inside 350 square feet. So this is a concept we came up with. Um, sorry about this video, hopefully we don't do another one like this where we just have some pictures of it, but we can give you a tour of what we have so far. This is what will be what we're going to call our guest cabin. We want a place where our kids or anybody can come up, spend the weekend with us, have a place of their own, a little bit of place that they can get away and be able to just sleep for a night or two. So it's a little ways from the cabin, but not too far where it's too inconvenient to use the basement that's on here. And we're going to go in and see that. But the main structure itself is just, it's 16 wide, 8 foot deep, and the porch is 15 by 6. So, exterior is done. I like how it came out so far. Um, we'll get into numbers here a little bit, but let's go on inside, see what we got, and we'll go down and take a look at the root cellar and show you how we did this. All right, so what we did here is just a basic type of build. It's two by four framing, 24 inch on center. We got two by six for our rafters. Just a purlin system on that. And we got steel roof. And I like the steel siding. It's just, we need to build this way. Uh, future, looking ahead into the future, it's gonna be lower maintenance. Uh, so once you got it up, you got it, it's painted and everything's ready to go. So my project for this winter is I'm gonna be insulating walls and ceiling, put the different uh, floor over the plywood and Probably going to do tongue and groove prying on the walls, but I'm thinking we'll probably, we're still up to debate, but it might be the corrugated uh, steel ceiling like we have in the cabin. But then we'll just have a, probably a pull-out couch in here, a couple chairs, maybe a small heater, but it's mostly going to be used in the summertime. And right now it's a extra catch-all for my tools, but that's just how these building projects go. Well, let's go take a look down the basement. Yes, this cabin does have a basement and we'll see what we got going on down there. Simple trap door, but due to the angle of stairs, always, always go down backwards. All right, so now we're down in the basement of the guest cabin. We are about six and a half, seven feet below grade. And I've never worked with brick, laid brick, Probably be the ideal thing to do for a root cellar. Ideally, you can find a place where you can build it on the side of the hill, but we didn't have that option either. So that's what we came up with. So what we got going on here, this structure is 16 by eight. And kind of the uh, logistics of that is these V-Groove Womanized two by sixes, which is covering the whole exterior here, come in 16 foot length. That's the most popular length. So we got 16 and then we cut the other ones in half, 16 by eight. Worked out good for the space between the shelves and just having enough room down here. We feel it came out pretty good. What I did first was I dug the hole down, obviously. Had a bulldozer I did that with. And then I put almondized four by sixes, four foot on center all the way around. So that's our bracing all the way around. And then once those were up, I wrapped it starting from the ground down and did the V groove tongue and groove all the way up to the foundation of the cabin itself. And then we have womanized two by eights going the eight foot distance for our floor joists of the cabin. But then once we had the um, exterior wrapped with the two by sixes, I took uh, some vapor water barrier and wrapped that around and it comes up to just under the grade of the dirt. So once that was all in and we had everything braced up well, we did have a cement truck come and we did pour a concrete floor in here just to lock in those four by sixes at the bases and just have a nice solid surface for, to keep the area clean and just 
makes it more comfortable down here. Figured out once we had this done, when well, you have the ceiling, we have the, the floor joists going across here. Well, you have to put something flat here. Otherwise, all the vapor moisture in here is going to gather up between the floor joists. So what I came up with is I just put a painted it white now, but it's a rigid pink insulation. So I got one inch of insulation on here also. So we finally got the shelving done down here. And Barb's got it well organized. She's going to give you a tour here on the second part of the video of everything she has here. But we did have this done before last winter. And the idea was all these jars here, all this canning work she's put in here, you don't want this stuff to freeze. And even though it did get cold down here, I think the coldest we recorded, we got a thermometer where you keep an eye on the temperature down here. 38 degrees right now but I think the coldest we recorded was 32 degrees and even the liquids on the shot top shelves did not freeze so we call it a win so we can store all our her canvas down here and be able to leave with good expectations everything's gonna be good when we come back so I'll let Barb take it from here and she'll give us a tour of everything she has in this place and hopefully this gives you some ideas different ideas what you can do for your food storage areas. Welcome to my root cellar. I am finished canning all of the stuff out of my garden for the year and now it's time for me to do some winter canning and so I've been making some soups and we finally got our root cellar finished and organized and it feels really good to be down here filling it up and I'm really happy with the way it turned out. So the purpose of our root cellar was not necessarily to store root vegetables, more of a frost-free storage and extra space for canned goods um, that we canned out of the garden. Everything in here is canned from things that we've either grown or harvested from the land with just a very few exceptions. Okay, this is my dry goods shelf. Um, we made the shelves a little bit bigger here because I used the gallon jars for all my dried goods. Um, I do have some moisture absorbers in here just to make sure that these items stay nice and dry inside the jars. And so far I've not had any problems. Um, a lot of my uh, dried goods I get from either Azure Standard or um, just bulk from some other places and I'll put those links in the description below. But so far everything has worked out really good in here um, for the dried goods. Down here I have a lot of different things that are freeze-dried, um, a lot of freeze-dried zucchini, things like uh, basil and green peppers, lots of bell peppers, and a lot of zucchini, oregano, more basil, Thai basil, and large chunks of kale, lots of different stuff that I've just freeze-dried and now that it's in mylar um, with oxygen absorbers in there, that will last for a really long time. and. This is out of my garden. This is all kale, spinach, and the beet greens. I just chopped them up in my food processor and then put them through the freeze dryer. And they're just 
just little flakes and you can add them into soups you can add them into i, I throw a lot of them in my uh, scrambled eggs in the morning and just let them rehydrate in the eggs and it's a really good way to get a little bit of extra greens in your diet and then all of the dried goods here is everything from salt to extra quinoa wheat berries all my extra beans i keep smaller jars of these in the house and then just refill my smaller jars from this stuff in here rice, more wheat berries, corn. I do have a grain mill that allows me to grind my own corn as well. I have white corn and yellow corn. So this shelf is just a lot of extra stuff um, that we, I don't keep inside. Um, extra condiments and some extra oils. Um, our bear lard, I, that's my last one I have of that. So I want to make sure that one stretches out a little bit. And then this shelf is mostly all meat products. Um, this is all venison and some canned chicken and then things like uh, chicken broth and some more venison. And I try to keep it organized by year so that we use up the oldest jars first. And then as we, as we get down here, we have all our jams and jellies and then our soups. This is cabbage soup made with some elk and the chicken soup that I just canned this week. And as you can see, I have room for lots more soups. Definitely need to make more soup this um, this winter. On this side, we have some dilly beans. One lonely last jar of canned potatoes. I got to do some more potatoes this year. That's one of the things that I did not can from my garden. Um, our sauerkraut that we had from our cabbage in the garden and some extra freeze dried um, emergency type of um, foods. Um, some butter powder, egg powder, and peanut butter powder, uh, powder up there. Um, all of the green salsa is tomatillo salsa from the garden from the last two years. Again, we're working with the, through the oldest first. Um, and then a couple of shelves of green beans and some green tomato salsa. Um, that one, I'm not sure I'm going to make it again. I'm not sure I really like it as much as the tomatillo salsa. And then all of my tomato products from here down. I've got regular canned tomatoes, I've got stewed tomatoes, tomato sauce in pints and half pints, and then all my salsas and a lot of spaghetti sauce. So this top shelf is all my relishes. I have um, dill and sweet relishes, and this is actually made with uh, mostly zucchini actually. And zucchini takes on the taste of whatever you can it with, so if you mix it with pickles, um, it just tastes like regular dill and sweet relish. Lots and lots of jalapeno jelly. We made some of this earlier in one of our other videos this year. I've got lots of ground cherry jam. I made basil jelly this year. I haven't opened one of these yet. I thought it would be fun to try because I had a, an abundance of basil this year. Um, I thought it'd be good on like a cream cheese um, on bagels or something. Um, so I thought I'd try that. I have um, roasted red bell peppers some pineapple zucchini. The last of last year's maple syrup is right here and that will uh, be replenished hopefully in a few more months and then i've got coleslaw and kohlrabi slaw that's all from the garden this is all um, new for this year and i have some fruit compotes right here and some cherry pie filling various um, pickled beets some of them don't look like beets but they are these are the white beets that don't have the the red staining um, color to them. They're kind of fun. Lots of uh, different types of pickled peppers. The last of my apples. Apples are another thing that I did not um, can um, the, the diced apples from our property. Um, I did, however, do all of my apple butter from the apples on our apple trees. And I got a several year stock of that. Um, some applesauce and some pears. And on the bottom shelf, I have some spice pears and some peaches. And this is our newest addition. And this is another shelf just for my empty jars. And this has allowed me to actually get this root cellar organized. Having this shelf done here for the empty jars has been a game changer. This place was pretty messy. I was just trying to store extra jars in all the openings between all the things. I like to try and keep things organized as well as I can with 
you know, like things with like things, the fruits and relishes on one shelf, and then you have all your, like your beans and tomato products there, but the jars were just kind of all over the place. And now that I have this shelf for the empty jars, I feel like all my other jars, it just looks a lot better. I'm not searching for different things and searching for one more wide mouth pint somewhere and it's just much better. I'm really happy with how this turned out. Um, then we have all of my buckets of my other dried goods, um, stuff like oatmeal, steel cut oats, extra spices that are in mylar bags inside the buckets inside the thing here. These uh, buckets have the gamma seal lids on them so they are um, moisture proof in here and they are food grade buckets as well. Um, even though we're finally just getting this organized uh, really well this year, we did use it last year um, as well for the first time and it did not get to freezing down here. Everything stored really well and um, I'm just really, really happy. Um, this was an experiment for us. We didn't know how we wanted to build it. Uh, we just knew that we really, really needed a root cellar and some extra food storage. So I am absolutely loving this root cellar. Um, I'm enjoying being down here and organizing everything. Um, we also have a shelf right here. Um, these totes right here are moisture and rodent proof. And so I keep all of my um, rings and lids in, in these containers here just to keep them clean and dry. Um, and also just some extra storage, my big tamale pot. Uh, my extra bowls when I'm not using them, and the the jar haulers. I'm not sure what else to call them, but these are something new that I've seen just this year. They're called a safe crate, and they're from Roots Harvest, and I'll put a link to these in the description below, but they come in um, quart size and pint size, and they are, they're just really heavy-duty plastic totes that you can move your jars around in without having to carry them in your in your little boxes. Um, the little boxes, I know they always say to, to keep your ball boxes, but those don't do well down here because it's the moisture content is just a little bit too much for cardboard down here. And so these things are phenomenal. I absolutely love these and I'm going to get some more because I have to bring these all the way from the house all the way down here. So like I said at the beginning of this video, we uh, started this project way before we had any thoughts of putting it on YouTube. But I know when uh, we put something out like this, people want to know kind of the general idea of the cost of it. I went back and looked at current prices. As best I could figure with the lumber, the concrete, uh, the steel, and everything we have so far, we have about $3,200 into this project. And I figure by the time we get it done, when we insulate the inside, get some finishes on the inside, we'll probably have... Probably about 4500 give or take on that, so I hope this helps you out. Remember, if you find this helpful, go ahead and uh, like and subscribe. It helps the channel. We hope you can find a different kind of quiet.